This is Vagar, and today we're going to discuss how to play Vagar on this current patch, 13.20. Vagar is a hard scaling burst mage who also happens to have one of the most valuable teamfight CC abilities in the game, Event Horizon, also known as Cage. Thanks to both his champion passive and his Q passive, Vagar can collect an indefinite amount of phenomenal evil stacks, which in effect gives him indefinite bonus AP throughout a game. <laughs> Since his ult is a single target point and click ability with an execution mechanic, Vagar's infinite scaling gives him the potential to single handedly take down just about any target during the late game. With this, it's easy to classify Vagar as a kind of burst assassin mage, but to do that would completely discount the utility and team fight power of Event Horizon. Thanks to Event Horizon, there is a strong argument to be made that Vagar can be classified as a true control mage with viable support builds that can max E and build for survivability. I'm getting, dude, I'm getting cancer playing with this Vagar! He's literally just sitting there with the wall! With all that being said, Vagar does have a few glaring flaws that can certainly be exploited on this current patch. First of all, Vagar's early game is very weak, and you may find yourself feeling like you're running a bit behind for a while which can be exasperated in matchups against champs that outrange you or champs that can outroam you in the early game. Second, Vagar is highly immobile. If you use Cage to harass someone or even to get a kill, you better be on high alert for enemy ganks as you have essentially no escape while that's on cooldown. Even with Cage up, highly mobile enemies can sometimes be very tricky to reliably lock down. Third, although you can indefinitely scale your AP, there are still enemies that will outscale you on the current patch. Aurelian's soul immediately comes to mind, and Riot seems to agree, as he's already slated for a nerf on the next patch. Some champions with kits that do more than Vagar or kits that innately scale can be a problem late game, even for Vagar. Now, if despite all of that, you're ready to control team fights and explode health bars, let's get into the details of Vagar's abilities. Vagar's passive is called Phenomenal Evil Power. Every time you hit an enemy champion with an ability or score a takedown, you gain permanent ability power. Notably, this passive is procced by all four of your abilities, and even landing a cage on an enemy champion will give you AP. This is part of how even support Vagar can obtain scaling in a lane. Vagar's Q is called Baleful Strike, and is a linear skill shot which damages the first two enemies hit. Kills with this ability grant one AP, which is tripled against large minions and monsters. If you're looking to scale hard, last hitting with Vagar's Q is incredibly crucial. It cannot be stated enough. In fact, if you take only one Vagar lesson from this whole video, it should be this. Farm your Q. Farm your Q. Farm your Q. Farm your Q. You're a champ built for hard scaling, so don't be weak. Since leveling Q lowers its cooldown and increases damage, this is generally the ability you'll want to max first, as it will make farming much easier. You'll also find as you scale that this ability can provide reliable damage in teamfights. Vagar's W is an AoE damage ability called Dark Matter. After a brief delay, Dark Matter falls from the sky, damaging enemies. This ability, while hard to land, can be very useful at times to zone enemies, it's also a perfect follow-up to hard CC, such as Event Horizon. Event Horizon, as we've discussed, is your E. It creates a cage that stuns enemies that touch its edges. As hinted at earlier, this is essentially your only self-peel, so always be sure to weigh the risk and cost-benefit of using it during the laning phase or when you're far from safety. This ability has seen numerous hard nerfs over the years, but arguably still remains one of the best non-ultimate CC abilities in the game. And finally, Vagar's ultimate is called Primordial Burst. 
This is an execution finisher move, and the lower the enemy's health, the more damage it deals. Being a point and click nuke on a single target, it's similar to the ability Flare from Final Fantasy, which is quite fitting for a black mage like Vagar. As for leveling all of your abilities, you will generally always want to prioritize your alt while maxing Q first. As far as how to prioritize W and E, there is no simple answer, as it can be highly comp, game state, and matchup dependent. Currently, the most popular order is to take Q, then W, then E, and then max Q, then W, then E. However, putting at least one extra point into E early can be vital when facing off against heavy dive comps or opponents with too much tenacity, as not only does this lower the cooldown, but increases the stun duration. In many games, you may find that you will need to max E second while putting just one extra point into W for the wave clear. Finding the balance of when to max one and when to max the other will take some practice and experience. One other quick note, alternatively, if you are playing support stunbot Vagar, you'll want to completely max E first, take all whenever possible, and then level W or Q depending on the specifics of that game. Currently, Vagar can be played comfortably in either mid or bot. Support Vagar is also viable, but is not currently a very popular or meta pick, and it can have a bit of a different play style from mid or bot. Now let's get into some builds. For summoner spells, you will always want to take Flash. Vagar is simply too immobile and Flash is simply too valuable of a summoner spell for him. For your secondary summoner spell, you have a few options, but your primary choice should be Teleport, even if queuing bot. Teleport is fantastic for Vagar because it allows him to perform crucial tempo resets in the early game, while giving him fantastic gank setup and map presence in the mid and late game. Ignite is another option you can consider if for some reason you're feeling especially confident in your lane matchup. This spell is best complemented by the Electrocute Keystone Rune Tree and a Lost Chapter Rush, whereas if you're playing a First Strike and Rod of Ages build, Teleport will likely be a better match for your playstyle. Barrier is another possible choice into some heavy dive comps. In other specific cases, or if you're queuing support, you may find exhaust useful against heavy dive comps or to protect your bot carry. For runes, you have quite a few options, and if being used properly, they should dictate what else you build and how you approach your game. Your first and perhaps most classic option is the domination path with Electrocute. Although the scaling on Electrocute has just been nerfed, the Keystone can synergize well with Vagar's trading patterns, especially when you're looking for a more burst or all-in playstyle, as opposed to poking or heavier scaling. With this rune page, in some cases you can actually swap out Electrocute for Predator, especially if the enemy team outranges you and is immobile. As for the rest of the tree, try out Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Relentless Hunter, with Mana Flow Band and Transcendence as your secondaries. Your next choice for runes is First Strike. While this can delay your already late power spike, the Inspiration Tree provides a lot of value. First Strike especially goes well with a tankier Vagar build with Rod of Ages and Archangel Staff, as fights tend to be more drawn out, and you won't find as much value from a burst rune like Electrocute. First Strike also just happens to be a generally strong rune on this patch, although it will be receiving a slight nerf on the next patch. As for the rest of this tree, try out Magical Footwear, or Perfect Timing if a stopwatch is desperately needed, Futures Market and Cosmic Insight, with Mana Flow Band and Transcendence as your secondaries. Another rune choice you have is Arcane Comet. While the Comet itself does not always perfectly synergize with Vagar's trade patterns, it can be strong in niche situations, where maybe you're doing more poking, but the Sorcery Rune Tree as a whole is just very valuable for Vagar. For the rest of the Rune Tree, try out Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm with Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter or Relentless Hunter for secondaries. Another note, with every one of these builds mentioned so far, when up against a very burst heavy or dive heavy composition, it can be very valuable to take the Resolve Tree secondary for runes like Bone Plating and Unflinching or Overgrowth. And one final Rune Tree to mention is Guardian. Obviously, you should really only ever take this as support, and it makes for a different Vagar playstyle. With that being said, Guardian scales with AP, and many summoners will misplay against this rune if they're not properly accounting for the extra survivability it provides for your lane. For the rest of this tree, you can try out Font of Life, Bone Blading and Unflinching with Mana Flow Band and Transcendence for secondaries. 
Now, let's discuss Vagar's item builds. This is a topic that could easily go on for far too long, so we'll just quickly cover the primary build paths. The first build path, which tends to go nicely with the Electrocute Rune page, is the following. Start with the Doran's Ring, and then build a Teardrop if you are having mana problems, or just immediately rush your lost chapter into one of its four builds. Prior to this patch, it was viable to skip the Doran's Ring and take Futures Market to cheese an early lost chapter. However, with the latest buff to Doran's Ring, I'd recommend against this, as Doran's Ring is too valuable. As far as which lost chapter item to build, there is a good argument for each of them, depending on the game state. In short, take Luden's Tempest when you want to prioritize Bursting Squishies, Leandry's Torment when you need to scale into the late game to take down tanks, Everfrost when you need self-peel and lockdown of melee champs, and Crown of the Shattered Queen on the rare occasion when you want to survive Burst and didn't build Rod of Ages for some reason. For boots, take Sorcerer's Shoes when you're the sole AP on your team and can likely avoid having to buy a Void Staff, or Lucidity Boots if you expect extended fights. Next, rush your Rabidon's Death Cap and then buy a Void Staff if your enemy is buying a lot of magic resistance. After this point, you can consider many different situational items depending on your playstyle and what you need. If you built an Everfrost or a Crown of the Shattered Queen, you'll get a bit more value out of buying resistances as you'll have a slightly larger HP pool to deal with. There's nothing wrong with buying additional damage items at this point in the game, but thanks to Vagar's innate scaling, items which help you survive are very strong for Vagar in the late game. The next build path, which tends to go nicely with the first strike rune page, is the following. Start again with the Doran's Ring, and build a teardrop as soon as possible to start stacking mana. Next, start building components of your Rod of Ages, prioritizing the Blasting Rod and the Ruby Crystal. For boots, you can sometimes get away with taking Sorcerer's Shoes, but Lucidity Boots work very well with this build, since Rod of Ages doesn't provide any ability haste. Also, since you are tankier, fights will be extended, and more spell rotations mean more value. Next, build the Teardrop into an Archangel's Staff. At this point, Vagar will be a surprisingly tanky little Yordle. Items to consider building next are Rabadon's Death Cap and Banshee's Veil. Even into comps without much AP, the Spell Shield from Banshee's Veil is rarely wasted. Finally, consider tanky items such as Deadman's Plate or Frozen Heart against heavy AD or auto attack comps, Force of Nature against heavy AP comps, Gargoyle Stone Plate versus Mixed Enemy Threat, and Anathema's Chains when the enemy team has just one person doing all the damage that you need to shut down. One last build path to just quickly mention is the tanky support Vagar build path, which would ideally be paired with Guardian. Start with a Relic Shield and then build into a Locket of the Iron Solari for survivability or an Even Shroud for slightly more damage. Next, you consider items such as Imperial Mandate, Frozen Heart, Gargoyle Stoneplate, Knight's Vow, Zeke's Convergence, or even items like Redemption and Mikhail's Blessing, which significantly synergize with Guardian. Now, let's get into Vagar's combos, of which there aren't many. Essentially, Vagar has one mini combo that you will benefit from being familiar with but it won't require drilling in the practice tool. The important mini combo to be aware of as Vagar is Q Flash. By starting the Q animation before flashing, you can buffer the animation and catch enemies unaware. This will give them much less response time than if you were to flash and then Q instead. Point your mouse to where you want your Q to go, then start the combo, pushing Q first and then flashing in the direction. This mini combo is not only great on Vagar, but translates to many other champions as well, such as the Ari Charm. When chasing an already wounded target, you can often follow this up with an immediate ult to secure a kill. Aside from this, Vagar doesn't have many classic combos as it really just comes down to spell rotations. I will note here that cage placement is an incredibly crucial part of playing Vagar, as a good stun will allow you to follow up with the rest of your abilities. If running Everfrost, be sure to pair it with Event Horizon for Chain CC, so you can extend your trades and achieve more damage. And one note on your alt, Primordial Burst. As already mentioned, this is essentially an execution ability, as it does more damage based on missing health. For this reason, you should always try to hold Primordial Burst for the end of your trades, when you know you can finish an enemy, or for finishing specific priority targets on the enemy team. As for favorable and unfavorable lane matchups, here's a rudimentary tier list that provides a rough estimate as to the difficulty of each matchup. Always be sure to take matchup tier lists like this with a grain of salt, as the skill level of both you and your opponent, and the full composition of both teams will have a large impact as to the outcome of the game. This tier list is aimed primarily at the 1v1 comparison of champion kits and how they interact, which will always vary. 
in the very hard category, we have champions that outrange you and that can make your life miserable in lane, plus Kassadin. In the hard category, we have champions that can outroam you early or outscale you. You can work hard to shut down champions like Fizz, Zed, and Katarina, but even so, they will just roam bot and open the game up that way. As for the average tier, we have a lot of standard meta mages. These matchups are generally fairly even for Vagar. The easier tier contains champions that are at a slight disadvantage to Vagar based on ability tethering ranges and trade rotations, but can still be difficult based on skill and team comps. And finally, we have the easy tier. Notably, Akali is at the very bottom of this list. While a skilled Akali can be difficult for just about any champion, and her move speed can make her a kiting monster, Vagar does have a number of innate advantages in this particular matchup. Vagar outranges and outscales Akali. Even if Akali uses Shroud, it doesn't always do her much good as Event Horizon basically makes a perfect circle around it, and you can still aim your Q and W at her presumed location. Finally, the real reason you are watching this video, the skin tier list. No commentary will be provided here, other than to mention that obviously Bad Santa Vagar goes up to A tier every December. Thank you, sincerely, for checking out my Essential Vagar Guide for Patch 13.20. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Take care.